Hi, this is Andy, KE4GKP. Welcome back to the Ham Whisperer and lesson 13 in the Technician Operator Element 2 exam course. In this lesson, we go over the T4A questions, which covers station setup, which is a pretty fun subject. The T4A section covers microphones, speakers, headphones, filters, power sources, connecting a computer, and RF grounding. All right, let's get started. Which of the following is true concerning the microphone connectors on amateur transceivers? Well, the answer is some connectors include push-to-talk and voltages for powering the microphone. Um, not all transmitters use the same connector, but most include connections for push-to-talk capabilities on the microphone and a power source to power the microphone. So just keep in mind, push-to-talk and voltages, and you'll get this answer correct. How might a computer be used as part of an amateur station? The answer is for logging contacts and contact information, for sending and receiving CW, and for generating and decoding digital signals. In other words, all of the above. It's an all of the above answer on the exam. So computers are pretty much becoming the future of ham radio, and they're really, really making uh, big strides in the way we use it and, and making our communications a lot more efficient. They're used for a lot more than logging, sending and receiving CW, and generating and decoding digital signals. So computers are very comp important, and they're really, really becoming a big part of ham radio. Which is a good reason to use a regulated power supply for communications equipment? Well, a regulated power supply prevents voltage fluctuations from reaching sensitive circuits. So the same kind of idea that you would use a surge protector for your computer, um, you want to use a regulated power supply for your radio equipment. It's to prevent voltage fluctuations from reaching sensitive circuits. Where must a filter be installed to reduce harmonic emissions? The answer is between the transmitter and the antenna. To get this question right, you need to think of a basic station setup. So when you think of emissions, you have to think of what's being emitted or what's being transmitted. And the only place to really catch things that are getting transmitted is between the transmitter and the antenna. If you do it before that, the emission isn't being produced yet. And then if you do it after the antenna, it's in the atmosphere anyway. So when you think emissions, think transmitter, and the only logical place to put a filter to control emissions is between the transmitter and the antenna. Where should an inline SWR meter be connected to monitor the standing wave ratio of the station antenna system? The answer is in series with the feed line between the transmitter and the antenna. This is another uh, instrument that goes between the transmitter and the antenna. SWR stands for standing wave ratio and is essentially a ratio which tells you how well your antenna is matched to your transmitter, your transmitter impedance wise. So it basically, in a very basic way, it tells you how effective your antenna is and how much of your signal is getting wasted in the feed line between your transmitter and your, your antenna. So this is a very important instrument and you get to be very, very familiar with SWR ratios um, as an amateur. So where should an inline SWR meter be connected to monitor the standing wave ratio of the station antenna system? The answer is in series with the feed line between the transmitter and the antenna. Which of the following would be connected between a transceiver and computer in a packet radio station? Now, if you've been hanging out with any hams and they've been doing packet radio, uh, that little box that goes between the radio and the computer is called a terminal node controller or TNC. Terminal node controller is what is on the exam. Packet radio is a form of data communication if you're not familiar with it. The piece of gear you need to work packet on your computer is a terminal node controller. Think of it as a type of modem for your radio. How is the computer sound card used when conducting digital communications using a computer? Well, the answer on the exam is the sound card provides audio to the microphone input and converts received audio to digital form. And it's kind of poorly phrased, but that's the gist of it. For some data modes, your computer can process the information through your sound card, and one of those modes is PSK31, which is one of my personal favorites. Now, the way this works is you can hook your computer's sound card output to the microphone input of your radio, and what you type on the computer gets converted to an audio code, and you can transmit with that. And then the, the signals you receive in that same mode, the audio signals, go into the input of your sound card and it converted to a digital, fo digital form so your computer can process them and then you can see them on your screen. So remember the sound card provides audio to the microphone input and converts received audio to digital form. Which type of conductor is best to use for RF grounding? 
All right, the best RF ground is a flat strap, and it provides the most efficient means for electrons to travel to the ground. This one isn't very obvious compared to the other possible answers on the exam. So the memory trick for it is imagine you're in the, the plains in the, in the Midwest, and the ground is flat. So the ground is flat, flat strap, you get that answer right. Which of the following could you use to cure distorted audio caused by RF current flowing on the shield of a microphone cable? The answer is a ferrite choke. So unfortunately it's not a very obvious answer, but if you look at the other possible answers and you look at the problem in the question, the other possible answers talk about filters and preamplifiers. So the problem is, is that you have RF current flowing on the shield of a microphone cable. So filters basically will filter out everything except for a very select range of frequencies. Amplifiers will take a signal and make it and basically amplify it. But chokes will produce or choke out a signal. So if you're the goal is trying to get rid of that RF current that's flowing on the shield of the microphone cable. So if you look at the possible answers and you think about the problem in the question, the obvious answer becomes the ferrite choke. So which of the following could be used to the cure distorted audio caused by RF current flowing in the shield of a microphone cable? The answer is to use a ferrite choke. What is the source of a high-pitched whine that varies with engine speed in a mobile transceiver's receive audio? Now the answer in the exam is the vehicle's alternator is what's causing this high-pitched whine. Now the alternator is the source of your vehicle's electricity and as your engine speed increases and the alternator speed increases, it can produce a lot of noise in your receiver. Now a good way to stop this is to put a good ground and that will reduce it sometimes, but remember that the vehicle's alternator can cause a high-pitched whine on your transceiver's receive audio. Where should the negative return connection of a mobile transceiver's power cable be connected? The answer is at the battery or engine block ground strap. Now the reason for this is when you're doing mobile operations or mobile communications, and you're installing your mobile transceiver, if you, there's probably lots of places where you can connect the negative return connection, like a, a cigarette lighter or some other um, a chassis or something else. If It's best to connect the, the negative return connection directly to the battery or to the engine block ground strap because by doing so, you avoid a lot of the other th electrical processes that are going on in your vehicle, and that can cause a lot of interference or a whine or some other problems with your mobile transceiver. So by going directly to the source of the battery or the engine block ground strap, you bypass a lot of that uh, unwanted electrical noise. What could be happening if another operator reports a variable high-pitched whine on the audio from your mobile transmitter? The answer is noise on the vehicle's electrical system is being transmitted along with your speech audio. Now this whine is caused by interference from the car's electrical system. Especially modern vehicles, there's a lot of electronics in cars, so when you turn the ignition on there's a lot of things happening, from the spark plug snapping to the computer warming up to a whole bunch of other stuff. So by ensuring a good ground like we talked about in the previous question, putting in good filters and making sure your car's electrical system is in good shape and your connections are tight. And I can't emphasize that more. Make sure that your connections, especially to your antenna and to your ground, are very, very solid. That will help prevent this problem. So if somebody tells you that you have a variable high-pitched high whine on the audio from your mobile transmitter, what it means is the noise on your vehicle's electrical system is being transmitted along with your speech audio. And that's it for the review, and now it's time for the T4A quiz. Take out a pencil and paper, number 1 through 12. I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick, so if you need more time, simply pause the video. When you're done with the quiz, you go to hamwhisperer.com and check under the exam answers page, which is a little link at the top, and you'll find the T4A link. Click on that and you'll get the answers to the quiz. All right, if you're ready, let's get started with the quiz. Question one. Which of the following is true concerning the microphone connectors on amateur transceivers? A. All transceivers use the same microphone connector type. B. Some connectors include push-to-talk and voltages for powering the microphone. C. All transceivers using the same connector type are wired identically. Or D. Unkeyed connectors allow any microphone to be connected. Question two. How might a computer be used as part of an amateur radio station? A. For logging contacts and contact information. 
B for sending and or receiving CW, C for generating and decoding digital signals, or D all of these choices are correct. Question 3. Which is a good reason to use a regulated power supply for communications equipment? A. It prevents voltage fluctuations from reaching sensitive circuits. B. A regulated power supply has FCC approval. C. A fuse or circuit breaker regulates its power. Or D. Power consumption is independent of load. Question 4. Where must a filter be installed to reduce harmonic emissions from your station? A. Between the transmitter and the antenna. B. Between the receiver and the transmitter. C. At the station power supply. Or D. At the microphone. Question 5. Where should an inline SWR meter be connected to monitor the standing wave ratio of the station antenna system? A. In series with the feed line between the transmitter and the antenna. B. In series with the station's ground. C. In parallel with the push to talk line and the antenna. Or D. In series with the power supply cable as close as possible to the radio. Question 6. Which of the following would be connected between a transceiver and computer in a packet radio station? A. A transmatch. B. Mixer. C. Terminal node controller. Or D. Antenna. Question 7. How is the computer's sound card used when conducting digital communications using a computer? A. The sound card communicates between the computer CPU and the video display. B. The sound card records the audio frequency for video display. C. The sound card provides audio to the microphone input and converts received audio to digital form. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 8. Which type of conductor is best to use for RF grounding? A. A round stranded wire. B. Round copper clad steel wire. C. Twisted pair cable. Or D. Flat strap. Question 9. Which of the following could you use to cure distorted audio caused by RF current flowing on the shield of a microphone cable. A. Bandpass filter. B. Low pass filter. C. Preamplifier. Or D. Ferrite choke. Question 10. What is the source of a high-pitched whine that varies with engine speed in a mobile transceiver's receive audio? A. The ignition system. B. The alternator. C. The electric fuel pump. Or D. Anti-lock braking system controllers. Question 11. Where should the negative return connection of a mobile transceiver's power cable be connected? A. At the battery or engine block ground strap. B. At the antenna mount. C. To any metal part of the vehicle. Or D. Through the transceiver's mounting bracket. In question 12, what could be happening if another operator reports a variable high-pitched whine on the audio from your mobile transmitter? A. Your microphone is picking up noise from an open window. B. You have the volume on your receiver set too high. C. You need to adjust your squelch control. Or D. Noise on the vehicle's electrical system is being transmitted along with your speech audio. And that's it for this lesson. The T4A lesson is done and so is the quiz. And now that you're done with the quiz, go to hamwhisper.com, go to the exam answers page, and click on the T4A link to get the answers to this quiz. And until next time in Lesson 14, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.